All right. Uh, hello. Good morning, and sorry for the late start. Uh, I hope your OpenStack summits going so uh, well so far. Um, so my name is Gautam Pacha Ravi, and I'm joined by my colleague here, uh, Carlos. Uh, we both work at Red Hat, and Carlos also the PTL for OpenStack Manila. Uh, and we're also joined by my friend here from uh, NetApp, Nahim Sosa. Uh, so we're here to talk to you about multi-tenancy orchestration with, uh, with OpenStack Manila. Uh, there's a lot to pack in, so this is going to be a really small uh, presentation with a lot of uh, information, so let's run through it. Uh, so we uh, try to touch upon what the ideal way of delivering shared file systems in a secure manner in a, uh, in a you know, shared cloud like OpenStack would be, and how you can do that with OpenStack Manila. And if you can't, maybe there is, uh, you know, that you don't really care about the kind of scale that you need in your clouds or... Uh, or you don't care, you don't have the ability to do that because you're using a software-defined uh, storage system or a storage system, vendor-provided storage system that doesn't have the capability to isolate your uh, data this way. Uh, how could you do this with some configuration stuff in Manila? That's what this presentation is all about. So, let me switch. Yes. So, shared file systems inherently starts with sharing, right? So the idea that you are going to have units of data, units of your storage system that you are going to carve out and, and have multiple clients access concurrently in a secure manner. That's the whole point of it. And so the, uh, when you're trying to put up something like this as an offering on your cloud, there's, uh, there, there's going to be a, I mean, you, you would have to start uh, worrying about how you're going to partition your users and partition their use of, the, of this shared file system such that each of them are ships in the dark, right? They are not interfering with each other's workloads. They're not, they're not able to access data that's not supposed to be accessed by uh, each other and so on. So the hard, uh, the, that is, I think, one of the basic tenets that, uh, we, I mean, we started out designing Manila for, right? So b giving you access to isolated data stores that, uh, that come with a guarantee that at the data level, they are going to be isolated. Right, so any no matter what storage system you're using behind Manila, the 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 the, the concept remains that you cannot be uh, uh, having unauthorized access to it, uh, even if you get somehow an access to the storage system through its network or anything of that sort. Um, th that that's that's a data isolation guarantee that's always there, no matter the storage system you're using. Now the harder and the more uh, interesting bit is how do you protect this data as it's coming out of the network? Right? It's not, and, and it may not just be about protecting the data and securing its transmission through that network. It could also be the fact that you're running some workloads with some expectation of a quality of service, uh, and you don't expect somebody else to be sharing the network alongside you that might interfere with your workloads, whether it's a performance maliciously uh, or, or, or even unintentionally. Right? So that's the part about protecting the, 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 and, and providing a network isolation aspect to this. Uh, so an ideal scenario. Uh, that's kind of what we began designing uh, the, the shared file system service with. The ideal scenario is you would let your users ask for your, their shared file systems to be exported on a particular network. And how would Manila do that? It would actually go ahead, uh, go and create isolated NAS servers, exported directly and plugged directly into these networks, these self-service networks that, they, that your users are asking uh, for their data to be on. That's the ideal scenario. And then we'll, we're going to contrast that with the other scenario where the operator, the OpenStack operator, can come up with a bunch of configuration and some rules such that you know, everybody in the cloud plays nicely and, and kind of mimic this ideal scenario. So the UX with this ideal uh, scenario is that the, uh, your end users are able to create networks, isolated networks on your cloud. And these could be your neutron networks, this could be self-service, or it could be provider networks that they have access to create, creating ports on. Right? So they, they represent that network on Manila as a share network, and you, they, they go ahead and use that share network to create a share. And when they create a share, behind the scenes, Manila is going to take care of provisioning a, an isolated NAS server on that network, plugging in the ports and so on, and only on that network, uh, and, and representing all of that stuff as export locations out the API. That's the ideal use case. The not so I I ideal, but something that doesn't scale that much, 
so you're okay probably using it in clouds where your the number of tenants are somehow known uh, beforehand or maybe you have a permissive tenant trust model right everybody is the same kind of tenant maybe you're in an organization that are different departments there is probably not a, a strict requirement for this kind of a network isolation a hard da uh, data path network isolation that's required so that would be something like if you're if you're using cephfs for instance right so if 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 you're serving native cephfs shares uh, you you'd have to have access to the ceph public network to mount those CFFS shares. So your, your, your workload is probably running on a virtual machine or a bare metal node or a container or anywhere, really. And it needs to connect to the Ceph public network in order to talk to the MDS daemons and so on and, 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 and get access to your Ceph data. So how would you protect some scenario like that? Uh, it, so that, that would be what this slide is all about. It's telling you that you could ha use other concepts in Marilla, such as private share types. So you would, you would isolate your Ceph cluster to one or f a few of your OpenStack tenants uh, and protect the share type from being visible and usable by the other tenants that are using your cloud. And you would provide access to the Ceph public network, again, via Neutron's uh, RBAC rules. So you could you know, create a RBAC policy, protect the storage network, uh, and provide access, make sure that it's visible and usable only to a, a you know, a tenant or a few tenants, and so on. And you could repeat this step multiple number of times if you had different sets of tenants that you had to provide this stuff to. And so the, the starting point here would be to start from the isolation that the storage system itself provides. And in case of Ceph, it would be creating dedicated uh, CephFS file systems, creating the MDS servers that are dedicated to each of your tenants or a group of tenants. So that's the... Uh, a breakdown of the configuration that's there. Well, it's a 15-minute presentation, a lot to pack in. So we did want to talk more about the ideal scenario and show you some of the uh, features that are there in Manila so you can manage the ideal scenario a little bit better. So the next few slides, my friends are going to talk to you about the features that are available with shared servers, the, 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 the use case where you have I the ideal uh, NAS scenario. Over. Right. So in the past, we had another talk very similar to this, and we didn't have as many features as we have today. So one of them, um, and this came in uh, API version 2.49. In the past, we weren't able to um, make Manila to manage existing NAS servers. So if you wanted Manila to manage the life cycle of a NAS server, you would need Manila to create it. But then with manage and unmanage for shared servers, you are able to bring existing workloads in your storage to uh, under Manila management. So Manila will be able to manage all of the life cycle, life cycle of that. And the difference between that and uh, the other driver mode uh, is that uh, you need Manila to, to take care first of the shared server and then all of the shares. So uh, this is basically the, the feature that allows you to bring the uh, existing workloads. And uh, there are a couple of use cases to this, one of them being uh, you can uh, move the shared servers like uh, from uh, one tenant to the other, or you can basically bring the shared servers under Manila management. So this is available in API version 2.49. And the next one uh, is shared server migration, which basically allows you to move one shared server or NAS server within all of its shared file systems from one cluster to the other. So you can, uh, instead of doing migrations like share by share, you can migrate them like with a, uh, a bulk migration from all of the shares at once. So it works quite similarly as uh, Manila shares migration, if you know Manila a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a two-phased approach. So the first phase is the data copy phase. So we will be copying all of the data from that, uh, from that share server and all of its shares and snapshots if the backends permit. And then after that data is complete, after, after that data copy is completed, then we are just able to uh, set the, stat the status of the shared servers and then uh, to phase one done. And then the administrators are able to control when they are going to actually uh, do the switch over. So before issuing the migration uh, start commands uh, or before starting copying any data, you can issue a check to see if uh, the migration is going to be disruptive, if your backend uh, actually uh, supports uh, copying snapshots and everything. So you, you can know all of that in advance. And then when in the second phase, when you do the switch over, that's when uh, if the backend does not support uh, 
non-disruptive migrations, uh, people would likely get disconnected, but some backends allow people not getting disconnected in the case. So uh, this was this is available since API version 2.56. Uh, yeah, it's one of the, the nice features we have implemented. Uh, it, a lot of enhancements are coming in, uh, release after release. So um, over to Nain now. So uh, I will talk about two more features uh, that are related to network isolation. Uh, the first one is uh, share network security services. Uh, a security services basically allows you to uh, manage the authentication and uh, authorization of your users. And the idea here uh, is that you can add a layer of security to your shares through the share network. So you can uh, add a security service in the share network configuration and you can uh, use this to uh, provide this authentication layer to your share networks. Uh, this received some enhancements in the, the later, later releases, I believe, 263 version of the API. Uh, before this feature, uh, it was possible to uh, assign a, a security service to a shared network, but not after the network was already deployed. So now it's similar to what is done in shared migration. You need to perform a check operation and see if it's compatible to, to the update. But after that, you can update the security service and deploy the share in a deployed share network in a share server. Uh, this allows users to uh, update the security service if the, it was already deployed and bring more flexibility to, to the users uh, that want to manage share networks. Uh, the last feature I'd like to mention quickly is related to multiple share sorry, multiple subnets in a single availability zone. The idea here is that the administrators can uh, add more than one share in the same, sub, or more than one subnet uh, in the same availability zone. So you can have multiple subnets in one availability zone and use this to manage your share networks. Previously, uh, it, this was not possible and it was a problem because subnets uh, when, the, when the subnet was full and they ran out of uh, possible location. But now this was solved and an administrator can create more subnets when needed. Uh, and I think that that's all I wanted to mention here. So that's all for our presentation. We are happy to answer if you have any questions. That's all, thank you everybody. <laughs>